so much, Scott. We appreciate your talents and the beautiful music that you share with us. Have you ever heard someone say, well, this is a real game changer? Maybe you've heard that phrase before. Well, certainly if we're looking for who's a game changer, we might reflect on the tech guru, Steve Jobs, who was a real game changer in our world. Rather than thinking about a product that may be lacking something or needed to be made better, his style of thinking would be sort of a quantum leap into a new area that said, let me look at things from a different perspective. What would the product do and what would be if we had it today? If I held it in my hand, what would it be like? Thinking from the desired end as if he had already possessed it. That's the key for him being a real game changer. Now, the Bible is offering us lots of tools to be game changers in our world. And who is that game changer? Well, it's a person who will create a significant shift in the current manner of doing or thinking about something. Shift in thinking. Yes, in God, shift happens. And we can embrace those shifts as we are truly game changers. How important it is for the ancient truth of Scripture invites us to do just that with this thought-provoking question that we read in our Scripture lesson for today. The ancient truth speaking to us and calling us forward to think in a certain way when Elisha this to the widow and saying, I'd like to help. Tell me, ask. But the question is not about the contents of the house. It's about something deeper. It's about asking about your thought life, your thinking, your way of thinking, what dwells in your thoughts. What do you have in your house? What's your framework of thinking? Where are you in that journey of thought? Let's look at this Old Testament story and I invite you to journey with me as we reflect on it. The wife of a man from the company of prophets had cried out to Elisha and said, my husband is dead. You know how much respect he had for the Lord, but he owed money to someone and now that person is coming to take my two boys away and to take them into slavery. And Elisha replied to her, how can I help? Tell me. What do you have in your house? And her response was, I don't have any. All I have is a little olive oil. Now, the story here is much deeper than just this inquiry. It was the question that made her stop and think. And she began to reveal truly what she had in her house. And today, Scripture is speaking to you. What do you have in your house? A thought-provoking question. What do you believe is yours? What do you believe that you possess? In the spirit and presence of God, do you feel and embrace this sense of abundance or sense of lack? Sense of unity with God or a sense of separation? The question is inviting us to stop and think. For the house metaphysically represents that framework of your thinking. And that framework of thinking represents a vibrational frequency that your life is sending. That frequency or vibrational level that is so crucial in attracting what you truly desire. You see, thoughts that say, I don't have anything. I'm lacking. Vibrate at a totally different level than thoughts that say, my house are filled with abundance and I'm fully aware of all the blessings of God. You see, those are different they're different frequencies, and they attract different outcomes. Now, you are more than this physical body. You are energy vibrating in a universe that's truly made up of energy. Science affirms this over and over again, that which we believe and hold to be true in our journey. We believe in this wonderful sense of an energy, a God presence within, that's vibrating within the very being of who we are. And your energy vibrations attract like energy to you. Similar in energy vibration will appear in your life. These thoughts that you share, that you think that dwell in your head, they're very creative. And they also attract. Do you believe this? Well, you know, if you don't, let me invite you to this experience. How about you test this out? How about changing your thinking from I don't have to I do have? 
for seven days. Travel a whole week of every day, a different mantra, a different way of thinking, a different outlook. It's not just throwing pink paint over things. It's not just trying to cover up, but it's beginning to think from a different perspective. What do you have in your house? What are the thoughts that dwell within me? What is my consciousness surrounded around? And when I suddenly begin to think, well, wait a minute, let me think of all that I have. Let me think of the blessings. Let me think of the bounty of goodness. Let me think of the health and wholeness that's mine. Let me welcome this thinking. And when I do, I change everything. And trust me, if you do this for seven days, at the end of a week of affirming thinking, of affirmative thought, your life is going to be changed because you'll have a whole different outlook about the everyday experiences that you're going through. You see, there is a law of attraction, a law of vibration that likes attract likes. The law of attraction is the belief that positive or negative thoughts bring positive or negative experiences to our life. The belief is based on the ideas that people and their thoughts are made from this pure energy, this energy that vibrates within us, this frequency that connects us with other like frequency that allow us and enable us to manifest amazing things in the journey of our life. Now, this energy is a vibration and a process of that like energy attracting energy exists through which a person can improve their health, wealth, and personal relationships. You attract what you're thinking. You attract the frequency that's resonating from you. What sort of thinking or consciousness do we see in this widow in the conversation that we see between her and Elisha? Well, she's truly coming from a thought process that says, I'm here all alone. I'm on my own. Do you realize the chance of my husband's dead? And now I'm facing all this debt. And now someone's coming to take my boys away from me and take them into slavery. All I can think of is lack, fear, separation. And it resonates in her very being. When she's asked, what do you have in her house? All she can think of is, I have nothing. And from that framework, from that thought pattern, from that frequency, from that vibration, what happens is she is attracting more and more lack, more and more of the thoughts of separation. We find in Matthew 25, 29, to all who have, more is given. And they who have more than enough, they who have will have more than enough. But everything will be taken away from those who don't have much. For to everyone who has shall more be given, and he shall have an abundance. But from the one who does not have, even what he does have shall be taken away. Let me explain that passage. What the scripture is inviting us to understand is that what you're holding in thought, that's what you have in your house, that what you have and dwell in your thought pattern, in the framework of your thinking, is going to make all the difference. Believing that you possess, believing that you do, believing that abundance is yours is going to be that which attracts more and more. When we come from this sense of lack, feeling I don't have, that sense just resonates in a way that it attracts more and more lack and everything that we have slips away from us. The key in our faith then is to create a vibrational match. Let's make it match together. Let's bring it together. How important that is in the journey of our life. That which we desire bring forth that very sense of knowing within our spirit and our heart and our mind. We express and that's what we speak in our day-to-day -day journey. You see, because one of the great mistakes we make is that we may think of something we want. We may express our desire to God. We may offer it in prayer. We may try to claim it, but we couple it with the energy that says, I don't have. And I, they, you struggle saying, how do I claim this when I don't have it? It begins by invoking the energy of thought that moves from the physical to the spiritual. I can't tell you how many times as a pastor here at City of Light over the past 20 years, I've had to say to people, the finances here don't work out on paper. It's true. There's so many times we faced all kinds of uh, 
challenges in our pathway when it comes to finances for funding the ministry. But God always makes a way. So when we look at the physical and we focus only on the physical and we're saying we're claiming God's goodness, but we're letting the physical shape our emotions and our energy around what we think, well, we don't attract what we so desire. But when we make a change, and within me I have all the goodness of God, the abundance of God. I'm created in the likeness and image of the divine. I know this to be true. I now no longer look at the physical, but I embrace the spiritual. And I look from the, at the world with a totally different vantage point. And I begin to evoke this wonderful energy within my life that can manifest and to attract that which I so desire within our life. So I couple that which I claim with a fervent faith, a power of believing within me that says, this I know to be my truth. How important it is that we can come to this place where we can say, this I know. Not this I think about, this I kind of have a hunch on, this I, but this I know. I know it and there's a solid faith and truth within me that resonates. Let's just say that you are trying to manifest something and you're having challenges and you're, that what you claim and your speak is not matching vibrationally in frequency with that which you so desire. Your feelings aren't matching with it. It might be like an example where you type an email and as you completed this email, this wonderful diatribe, sending off to a phone. The power goes out. Do you think then that something's wrong with your email message? You think, maybe I need to retype this. It didn't send. Uh, something's wrong with the message. No, you understand that it's the lack of power, the lack of energy to send it out is why the email is not moving forward. So it's true within our lives that we may send this message, we may speak this message, but if the energy of faith, of believing, and of trusting in the divine is not there, it falls flat. Now the prophet asked the widow this game-changing question. What do you have in your house? What's the framework of your thinking? What's occupying your thoughts? And this is what's echoing for us today. I wanna to ask you the same question. What do you have in your house? What's occupying your mind? What's occupying your thinking? Now to help her change her thinking and to prove that she was blessed, Elisha gave her instructions. He said, go and borrow every empty jar you can find. Go around to your neighbors and ask them to, do you have any empty jars? Do you have any empty jars? Can I borrow them? Could I have them and get as many as you can? Then go inside your house, shut the door behind you and your sons and pour the oil that you have into your jars. This, I have all these jars, all these containers I've collected, and I'm gonna pour the little bit of olive oil that I have? How ridiculous that may have seemed. You see, when we're looking at things from the physical, it seems ridiculous. But when we look at it with the eyes of faith, we're believing in the abundance, the ongoing divine flow at work, that there is plenty and more flowing in us, through us, and around us. So she does so. And the woman left him, and she shut the door behind her and her sons, and she brought the, they brought the jars to her, and she kept pouring a little bit. Oh, this one's full. Said another jar. This one's full. Another jar. This one's full. And another, and another, and another. And before you know, she had filled up all the jars, and she turned to her sons and says, Are there any more jars? No, you filled them all. That's it. And then the oil stopped flowing. And she went and told Elisha, Wow, I can't believe this is an amazing experience. Elisha said, now go and sell what you have, sell the oil and pay your debts off and you and your sons can live off what is left. I love this a story of abundance, not just saying just enough, but an abundance, that there's so much that you can pay off the debt and live in the abundance that's left over. This is the story of our life. To be a game changer, we have to shift our thinking from that which is saying, it's not possible, this won't work, it's not working for me, uh, I'm but I don't feel it. And when we shift the energy and the vibrational frequencies begin to match, bam, that's when we begin to manifest. 
and faith comes alive and begins to work within our hearts and our lives. Miraculously, as the woman began to pour the oil out, the oil kept pouring until the jar was filled. And one by one, each jar was filled and there were no empty jars there. Now, when we think from that perspective, the question now is, what do you have in your house? I have this, I have this small amount. Use and work and begin there and know that the blessing of God is going to work through whatever. So the limited thoughts you may have, well, I'm struggling with this thinking. I'm trying to develop this journey of aff affirmative thinking. I'm trying to work on this, but it's challenging me all the time. But I'm going to begin with the thoughts that I do have and let them expand and grow and flourish and develop even to something greater until every day as I affirm, as I affirm over and over again, it begins to unfold within me. How about the little train that tried to make it up the hill? I think I can, 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 until it makes it up over the hill. And that's the beginning. Work with what you have, the thoughts that you have, and allow them to develop as you begin to think of the praise of God, the goodness of God, the thanksgiving of God, the blessings of God. You begin to take affirmations and passages of scripture and truth and promises and begin to hold them over and over and over in your mind. And as you do, there is an increase. There is an ability, your attention within, and there discover that the power of the Spirit is at work changing every outcome. And I want you to be a game changer, someone who is making a shift in your thinking this week. I want you to experience that shift in such a dynamic way that you begin to attract to your life those things that you desire, health, wholeness, peace, joy, love, mercy, forgiveness, prosperity, and great success. All these things are available to you, but it requires a little shift in consciousness. So would you do something with me right now? Right now, I want you to feel as though you already possess everything you need. That's right. What does it feel like? Feel it right now. Right now. I feel, I feel like I possess everything that I need. Wow. It's peaceful. It's secure. It's comforting. I feel this. Right now, I want you to feel that you are important, successful, achieving, valuable. You are prosperous in all that you do. Feel it. What does it feel like? you feeling peace contentment joy fulfillment feel it right now feel right now that you are whole that you are well physically and emotionally nothing is hindering your success because within body and mind you feel completely perfect whole well feel it right now feel that Feel right now that you are loved, loving, and surrounded by caring relationships. And as you feel this, allow the waves of love and contentment, knowing that there is love for you, in you, through you, around you, at all times. Feel this love right now. You see, this is what we're called to do. As Elisha said to the widow, take what you have and go Shut the door. Shut the door. Meaning go away into a private space. Going away secluded. Go within. Close the door out of all other thoughts. Any kind of ideas that say, it ain't going to work. This won't work for me. I, I, it's too po impossible. It's too hard. It's not going to manifest for me. Shut the door to all other things. And there begin to claim. Sending the message coupled with the feeling sending out the word coupled with the energy that matches exactly that which you desire. Shut the door and pour out the oil of your essence. Pour out the oil of your innermost being. Pour out the oil of that which you have in your house, of the new thoughts, the thoughts affirming, the thoughts of power and goodness, the thoughts of blessing and provision. 
And as you do, then take an inventory. Because as you listen to those new thoughts and feeling and those vibrations coming into alignment, get ready. You're ready to attract amazing things coming to you. You're setting yourself in perfect alignment for the divine blessing that wants to unfold in your life right now. Right now. Get ready. We began this service asking, are you ready? This is the day the Lord hath made. And everything within this day, God has made and created for you. So it's a call for you to have a mindset, a framework of thinking to hold within your house. I rejoice. I receive. And I am filled with gladness. I am filled with the joy. And that's what I pour out into every vessel I encounter. I'm going to ask you today, what's in your house? It's a game-changing thought. And I invite you to be a game changer. Amen.